All right. Well, it looks like we are at the top of the hour here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started. So good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the webinar discussing readmissions and care transitions this afternoon. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. All lines will be muted. For those of you using your computer audio, we ask that you please mute your line throughout the presentation due to any potential uh, noise feedback that might occur during that time. Throughout the discussion, please feel free to type your questions in the chat and they will be responded to after the presentations are all complete. Additionally, this session will be recorded and we will post the recording and the slides on the MHA community site. If you have any additional questions outside of the webinar, uh, please email keystone at mha.org. My name is Nadine Allen. I'm the Quality Director with the Wisconsin Hospital Association. And today you will hear from three of our partner state hospital associations in Illinois, Michigan, and Minnesota regarding strategies to improve the patient experience and outcomes as patients are discharged from the hospital. As a reminder, all four of our state hospital associations are currently working together on a new group of CMS contracts under the Superior Health Quality Alliance umbrella. With that said, it is my pleasure to introduce our first presenters from the Illinois Health and Hospital Association. We have Jenny Winkler, she is the Director of Quality, Safety, and Health Policy, and Adam Colris, the Assistant Vice President of Quality, Safety, and Health Policy. Thank you. Thanks, Nadine. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's Jenny. So Adam and I are going to talk to you guys about a couple of the resources that we had developed um, that impact readmissions. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and start with uh, introducing the implementation playbook. So we developed a suite of implementation playbooks um, that we had identified uh, that helped um, as part of our HIN work and to help us identify unique approaches or, or best practices to achieve those HIN goals. So we created these playbooks as a digital resource that have a different look and feel, you know, from your typical toolkit. And this is just a way that we supported hospitals and other organizations with implementing those same approaches um, to spread best practices. We have seven playbooks um, that have been developed that cover topics that range from infection prevention to reducing readmissions. Um, and so we're going to talk through a couple of those today. Within each of those playbooks, there's some background about the development of the playbook, um, cast of characters from organizations that we've worked with on those specific best practices. Um, and we've been able to share these playbooks in a variety of ways that include webinars or in-person events um, to just, again, help spread those best practices. So this slide has a link that you can visit um, and download the playbooks to review. Um, and with that, so we're going to go ahead and dive into a couple of our playbooks that have impacted readmissions. Um, and this first one I want to share with you is titled Social Determinants of Health Screening in the Emergency Department. Um, and to develop this, we worked with a coalition of hospitals and community partners on the west side of Chicago um, to implement a program that screens and connects patients uh, to social services uh, providers and address different social determinants of health. So this group really worked together to develop and implement social determinant screening questions in their emergency department. And then based on those screening questions, um, worked to connect those patients to services to help support them. Uh, and so this playbook lays out the different steps that this group used to implement that screening. Um, and so we're gonna go through those a little bit. Those steps are broken out into three phases. Um, I'm not going to walk through all of the steps in each of the phases, but what I want to do is give you a snapshot of what's included and then talk through a couple of the tools that we have where you can implement these same steps in your hospital. So the first phase with this work was really about that, uh, establishing a partnership, assessing your organization's capacity um, for implementing this process. Um, and of course, you know, starting with your leadership to make a case for implementing social determinants of health screening starting to build the team in your hospital that will help oversee this work. Um, this is also the first part uh, in this phase where you establish or you identify the community organizations that you feel will contribute to the success of this work and then start establishing or building on um, existing relationships to help you understand those organizations ability and capacity to accept referrals. Uh, the second phase of this work really gets into the nitty gritty of designing a screening workflow. 
Um, and that includes opportunities to integrate social determinants of health screening into existing workflows so you can prevent your staff from feeling overwhelmed. overwhelmed. Um, so there's a lot of steps in here. Many of these, you know, as you read through these, these can be done simultaneously. And then the third phase of this work really gets into the process for actually screening patients that come into the emergency department and then referring them to services. So um, it's focused on the training and the motivational interviewing that's needed when you're asking those screening questions and then when possible, facilitating a warm handoff and connecting those patients to your, the community services. So in addition to the tools and resources that are already embedded in this playbook, there's a couple of things that you can do uh, to support your efforts with implementing this process in your facility. So I'm gonna run through these tools pretty quickly. Um, the first one is a gap analysis tool. And so gap analysis tools are, are opportunities for you to take a look at your hospital's processes, identify different steps that you might already have in place, and then look to see where you could, um, and help you to narrow down and look to see where you would start with implementing the social determinants of health screening. So um, looking at the tools that's on this slide, you can see there's key activities listed. Um, each of these are tied to the key activities that are part of the playbook. Um, and then after completing the assessment, there's a box at the bottom of the, the gap analysis tool where you can start um, brainstorming what steps you're gonna work on and some of the action items um, that, you know, that you'll take to, to get the ball rolling with this process. So it's a really good way to start the conversation and kind of um, get the ball moving with this. Another piece of uh, implementing this work is, is action planning. And so um, we have another resource um, that's a living document that you, you, know, you can use to help with outlining the steps that you need to take to implement the social determinants of health screening in your facility. So, this action planning document is broken out by each uh, with each of the phases. Um, and again, it's something that you can reference as a blueprint to help you plan and strategize how you would move through each of those key steps. Um, so with that, I wanna spend a couple minutes talking through a second playbook that we've developed. Um, also, uh, this one's called the Enhancing Partnerships to Address Social Determinants of Health. Um, and so this playbook, is really designed to support hospitals and community organizations with implementing a program that identifies social determinants of health needs in the community, and then also working together to enhance the referral process to address a specific social determinant of health. So similar to the, the playbook that we just walked through, um, this playbook has tons of key steps um, you know, uh, to, to help your organization be successful with this program. Um, and this, this playbook is also broken out into three phases. And so as, as we're gonna take a look high, at a high level at the different phases, I wanna highlight a couple of the resources that we have in the playbook um, that can support you with implementing the same process in your organization. So the first phase here is really about um, identifying social determinants of health resources or gaps that exist in your hospital and then potentially within the community. And so, again, with all of this work and with, with any project that you start, you know, securing your leadership buy-in is important um, to moving forward with the work. And so, once you're, you secure buy-in with your leadership, then identifying those facilities in the community where your relationships already exist or, where, or in an organization where you would like to develop or make a connection, um, and, then, and then starting that communication with that organization. Your hospital and your community partner will ultimately come together to talk about what resources each of you have available um, and any gaps in your, in your processes that have been identified. But prior to that, that initial meeting together, um, each organization should do some pre-work that includes identifying their internal resources, um, and also looking at what their internal processes are. And so, um, again, there's a variety of resources we have built into this playbook. Um, and so I wanna share those with you. So this first resource just is an example of some of the screening questions that organizations or, or different hospitals can use to address social determinants of health. Um, another tool we have um, is something that we developed um, with, uh, with our hospital and our community partners. And this is just a great resource. Um, it's called an opportunity assessment to help you identify 
you know, what, what resources you have in place. Um, so I apologize, looking at this slide, it appears really, really small, but on the left-hand side of this assessment, uh, there are a variety of statements that are related to specific social determinants of health. So for example, you know, a patient expresses feelings of loneliness or a patient eats most of their meals alone. Um, and so what we encourage hospitals to do is, you know, as you read those statements and move across the tools, the, the tool, there are boxes um, that a hospital can answer whether they always, sometimes, or never have either have data available to identify these patients um, and if there is a process in place in your organization to connect these patients to community organizations. Um, and then community organizations also have a similar assessment that they complete um, related to these same uh, corresponding social determinants of health. And so again, we encourage organizations to complete this assessment or some type of assessment because it really helps guide the conversation when your hospital comes together with their community partner to identify strengths and area of opportunities um, in your work regarding social determinants of health. And so um, in this, ooh, okay, I apologize. Um, slides went a little bit crazy. Okay, uh, in the second phase of this playbook, um, this is really where you talk about organizations coming together and starting to develop that relationship identifying social determinants of health gaps in the community, and then outlining opportunities to increase and improve, uh, improve the efficiencies um, in the referral process. And so this is where hospitals and community partners will share the work that they've done as part of that first phase, um, and, then, and then work on enhancing that referral process. So um, during this meeting, each organization has an opportunity to share what they've learned through their opportunity assessment. Um, and merge all that information so it's on one page. So this slide has an example of um, what an organization, one of the organizations that we've worked with when they merged their, the responses to their assessment together. Um, and it was a really great opportunity for them to look at um, you know, what, what social determinants of health needs there are in the community. The other piece um, of this work is that when the hospital and community partners come together, it's, it's actually start mapping out the referral process that exists between organizations. And then when mapping out that referral process, doing so with as much detail as possible. So this slide lists a couple of the questions um, that you know we, we posed for both organizations to keep in mind as they're starting to map out their referral process and focus on um, what social determinants of health needs there are in their community. So, um, if you're able to meet in person with your community partners, that's wonderful. I know things have changed now in the time um, of COVID, but um, I just wanted to share with you that this, these are just a couple examples of referral maps that were completed during some of the in-person meetings um, that we had with our hospitals and their community partners. Um, and then the last piece of this work um, is when, when the organizations come together, um, is the action planning piece. And this is where, you know, the focus revolves around identifying opportunities for improving the current referral process. And so this tool was developed, um, again, using the Models for Improvement. Um, oops, slides are jumping a little bit. Um, and, and serves similar to the, the previous action planning document that we looked at as a uh, the blueprint and, and a living document that you can use to enhance the referral process between organizations. So um, we encourage them to complete that. And so the third phase of this work really starts after that first partner meeting, and that focuses on um, continuing to build on the relationship that's been established and then working on the ongoing evaluation um, and the implementation of their of their program and, and improving the referral process. So, um, you know, we want to this is, excuse me, we want to sustain all of the great work that our hospitals and their community partners have started. So that's what this third phase is about. Um, and the last example, this slide um, gives an example of a completed action plan that we had um, that a couple of our groups have done and, and when they've engaged in this work, um, just so you can see, um, you know, a screenshot of, of what's been completed and, and what others have worked on before. So um, those are some of the tools you can use for this. And now, I'm going to hand it over to my teammate, Adam, 
um, who's going to talk about our last playbook and some of the tools that are used to support this work. Awesome. Thanks so much, Jenny, and thanks for teeing all that up. You know, what I want to do first, guys, um, I just sent out in the chat uh, a hyperlink to our page at IHA, which has uh, all six of our implementation playbooks are housed there uh, that you guys can download for free. And so the, the two that Jenny just give, uh, gave a nice overview of, and then this one here that I'm going to touch on, and honestly, I'm not going to dive into this readmissions playbook um, in the depth that Jenny dove into those first two. What, what I'd like to do is tee this one up kind of briefly. And then uh, what we were hoping we could do is give you guys a sense of how some hospitals that we've worked with are actually operationalizing these playbooks. Because I think it's one thing to put the knowledge in front of folks and to say, hey, here, here's, you know, a great playbook full of good stuff. Um, download it and then go forth with your teams. It's another thing to give folks that knowledge and then also give you some scaffolding as to how you can actually uh, meaningfully implement uh, some of the knowledge and best practices that are embedded within, in these playbooks. So what I'm going to touch on over the course of just the next uh, few minutes here before we hand it off to our colleagues in Michigan is uh, some of those strategies that, that we've used with hospitals that have been effective. Um, so this playbook uh, that, I'll, that I'll lead us into in talking about these strategies is one uh, that was focused on the reduction of readmissions. Uh, we had a, a big hospital in the Chicagoland area who actually partnered up with a critical access hospital in Illinois. And they were able to take this process uh, that the advocate hospital created of an individualized care plan, and they translated it um, into that, that small 25-bed hospital uh, about four hours away. And so uh, what we liked about the spread of this one is that we really were demonstrating we can take stuff from different settings um, and, and effectively uh, implement it and embed it in other cultures. And so this is a high-level overview of, of this playbook. Again, it was, it was called an individualized care plan. The nice thing about these playbooks and all these, as you download them, there's going to be a lot of these graphics, which Jenny touched on too. Um, and this is where the meat and the bones of these playbooks are. So all the hospitals who helped us design these were, were very uh, open. Um, one of the first kind of prerequisites we had was if they were going to do this with us, we had to make sure all the materials they were going to create were in essence open source. Um, so as you click through these playbooks, look for these icons with a little cursor on them because those are going to be uh, the PowerPoints, the policies, uh, the competencies, um, all the different tools and resources that these teams built to operationalize these concepts. And so just a great treasure trove of, of not having to reinvent the wheel for you guys. So keep your eyes out for those. So uh, like I said, I wanna show you guys a few practical strategies which you could all pick up and apply to any of these playbooks and not just these playbooks, but obviously other projects you guys are doing. Uh, these are just really a few effective uh, design uh, strategies that we've been using to, to implement this stuff. And so this slide touches on a day that we had um, many moons ago, pre-COVID, uh, over a year ago, up in Michigan, in which we launched this playbook and we got teams together. And for a full day, we basically uh, worked through how hospitals could take that playbook and then start implementing aspects of it when they went home. And so the, the beauty of this day, though, and that's why we wanted to highlight this, even though we did this in person with a bunch of folks, um, we, we do have the tools uh, that you guys could use to operationalize this stuff um, outside of a setting with, with IHA or MHA. So these are some strategies that, that we worked with to implement the, uh, the playbooks. And what we're focused on here, the three strategies and tools that I'm going to show you are all system design thinking canvases, uh, which sounds uh, like a very expensive term, but it's really straightforward. Uh, what we love about using these canvases are that it enables us to really empower all the members of your team. Uh, everybody gets kind of the power of the pen, if you will, because we have a big canvas, and then we encourage teams to gather around that canvas um, and, and write their ideas and thoughts on Post-it notes and slap it down. And, and we, we have these, uh, these tools that are really time sensitive because you know, we don't want folks to spend uh, days and multiple meetings pontificating on things, but we really want to want to drive to action. And so I think that's what uh, these canvases do effectively. They get the voice of everybody around the table going, um, and they get you to these practical, pragmatic steps. So this first canvas um, is, is always one of the most important ones to get out of the gate. 
these are also embedded in all the playbooks that you'll download, and it's simply the vision and strategy canvas. So after your team uh, kind of digests all the information in the playbook that you're looking at, it's important uh, to be able to translate that into what it would look like in your setting. Um, and so what would be the steps that you would need to take at your organization? Who would you need to get on board? What are the things you would need to do? And then what is your ultimate goal um, for said playbook? So this is just a really nice piece uh, and way for hospitals and teams to kind of coalesce around that vision and mission out of the gate before you start jumping into implementation. Um, and so this is uh, one of the vision and strategy canvases. I know these are going to be tough to read, so I'm not going to read through all the post-its here. Uh, but again, to give you guys a sense of how this can work um, in a communal team setting, and again, great to have the power of the pen and everybody gets their, their Sharpie marker and their, their post-it notes and you would be amazed at how quickly in 35 minutes you can get really uh, robust ideas and thoughts down on the paper as opposed to how we traditionally do some meetings uh, that are more sitting around and brainstorming. So just a good way to activate the team. Um, a second tool that we use a lot is something we call the culture map. So once you have your playbook in front of you, you know um, how you want to operationalize it, what your goals are, kind of really meaningfully outlaying what those behaviors and outcomes and, and blockers and enablers are going to be um, as as you get going before you jump into implementation. So this particular hospital set out of the gate, you know, with our readmissions program, we want to ensure that we're targeting not just the reduction in readmissions, which is the very top posted here, but also employee and patient satisfaction. And we know in order to do those things, we're going to have to do things like inviting the family. And so there's a couple different strategies here around that. And then also, you know, talking through on the bottom block here what some of their enablers and blockers for those particular behaviors would be. And not shockingly, IT and e EHR um, issues jumped up as one of the potential blockers. So again, this culture map is a good way uh, to kind of start having the rubber meet the road and, and, and anticipating some of those either barriers um, or roadblocks that you might see once you start to implement. And then the, the last uh, canvas here is a super helpful one that we've used outside of a lot of these playbooks as well. Uh, it's called the graphic game plan. And so this one um, is, is pretty straightforward. You've got a target, you've got an arrow, and then you want to set the goal of how long you have kind of at the end of that arrow and then build all the stuff you're going to have to do to get there along with uh, other objectives that you might have or challenges that you might face along the way. And so for these playbooks, when we're implementing them with hospitals, many times it's like a four month window. So, so we're saying, okay, at the end of four months, what big pieces of this playbook do you wanna have in place? And then what are those tasks that we're gonna to have to nail down as the months progress uh, while considering the different challenges and objectives that we may have? And so uh, this is the one that one of the hospitals did. And for this one, it is important. Uh, we always try and encourage hospitals to have different color post-it notes kind of on each monthly block there, um, but they had another great objective here of wanting to have an ROI attached to this work uh, that they could take the senior leadership to CFOs and others. Uh, but again, um, just a nice graphic game plan slash time plan um, uh, document or resource here. And I know there's uh, uh, kind of a hundred different ways to, to skin this cat, but this one has been an effective one ensuring that teams are all able to empower folks around the table to um, to be able to say, yep, this is a task that's mine and I'm taking accountability for it here and I'm writing it down. And at the end of the day, after an hour or so to have folks uh, all really together and on the same page. So as we close, you know, this is one thing we challenged uh, hospitals to do at our different road shows and our meetings was, was committing to a way that they were gonna spread this innovation or what they were gonna do and so I wanted to, to highlight that, encourage and challenge you guys to do the same, uh, and also call out a few of the key insights from uh, this playbook and, and others. And, and I think the last point here is the one that I just want to touch on. You know, too often I think uh, project teams, uh, we, we worry about boiling the ocean up front and reducing something like readmissions by 10 or 15% in a year. And um, many times what we're encouraging folks to do is to, to small, uh, just test the stuff out on a smaller scale. And we had an organization who said, this sounds great. We're gonna take this forward, but we're gonna figure out how to do this with three patients, not housewide. We're basically gonna pilot test this for a month or two, see what our outcomes and our roadblocks are. 
before we feel out if this is going to be a policy or an intervention that we want to kind of integrate into the, the larger scale of the team. Uh, so again, um, really thank you guys for the time. Um, we encourage you guys to take a look at the playbooks. If you have any questions around any of the content in those or how you might implement those, don't hesitate to reach out uh, to Jenny or I in Illinois. and We'd be happy to jump on the horn with you or, or email you any um, insights or that, that we may have. So thank you again. And, and with that, I'll go ahead and pass it uh, the ball back across to our partners uh, in Michigan. Thank you so much, uh, Jennifer and um, Adam. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Eva Panetta, manager at the MHA Keystone Center. I have the great pleasure of sharing some of the great resources and activities which occurred here in Michigan um, under the Hospital Improvement Innovation Network scope. During this portion of the presentation, you will hear about four specific improvement efforts. Uh, we hope you can utilize these resources and tools to advance your work in improving readmissions and addressing sustainability around this very important yet often challenging topic. So to start, oh my apology, uh, one of the early key lessons learned around readmissions, which we identified through not only quantitative data trends as well as qualitative information shared during monthly calls with our member hospitals, um, was the critical need to assess your root causes that lead to higher readmission rates specific to your organization. The Readmissions Improvement Action Network was a quality improvement initiative driven by the A3 Problem Solving Methodology, a lean tool, which focused on clearly identifying the problem and correctly diagnosing it through a valid analysis of the root causes of your readmissions problem, not someone else's, uh, so that the interventions you develop match the correct diagnoses. The activity provided an in-depth look on how to successfully develop and use the A3 tool by fostering dialogue within your whole organization, developing problem solvers, and encouraging frontline engagement to successfully integrate lean methodology into organizational readmission efforts. Resources, tools, and handouts from the improvement activity are all available on the MHA community site. Link um, has been included on the slide for you. Another key area that emerged through our data analysis was the identification of sepsis as one of the leading causes of readmissions. With that in mind, we gathered two experts in the field, Pad Posa and Dr. Holly Prescott, to develop an in-depth regional learning session along with supporting coaching webinars that focused on setting the stage of national and Michigan-specific epidemiology of sepsis readmissions and sharing strategies and best practices to prevent sepsis and reduce sepsis-related readmissions. This included strategies for prevention, such as early sepsis recognition, ABCD, early mobility, best practices of discharge, such as medication, reconciliation, effective patient preparation and education on post-sepsis morbidity, as well as best practices for post-discharge. So things like top preventable readmission diagnosis, peer support, and functional rehabilitation. A couple tools I wanted to bring to your attention developed as part of this improvement activity. One is the sepsis readmission gap analysis. Uh, which is a great uh, tool that was developed by the two experts as part of this activity. Uh, Jennifer and Adam both shared a gap analysis tool, and so similar, this tool does a great way of assessing your current state for some of the key best practices covered during the session to help address and prevent sepsis-related readmissions. The second tool is a resource guide, which provided some great national resources as well as recommendations for key measures to track performance in improving and monitoring outcomes. Again, all of the material from the session are available on the MHA community site, link provided right here, and I strongly encourage you to check out these great resources and content. So toward the tail end of the HIN performance year, readmissions continue to be an opportunity for us. Thus, we deployed a readmission improvement sprint, which we uh, which were led by two experts in performance improvement, Dr. Jeff Lassick and Michael Roth, who helped support organizations in addressing barriers, facilitating behavior change, and driving measurable improvements in the identified areas of harm. This activity looked at addressing the gap between what we know through research and what is actually implemented. 
known as the No Do Gap. The improvement sprints are rapid implementation programs designed to amplify the impact of efforts by addressing project drift. Composed of three learning webinars that focused on coaching organizations to implement robust learning and improvement systems to drive sustainable performance improvement. The program focused on sharing contemporary evidence-based tools and educational resources to identify gaps, opportunities, and track progress. Highlighting concrete steps, operations, guidelines, as well as policy development and best practices and offering tactical steps to implement innovation at your hospital. Here, I wanted to highlight a great tool used during the rapid implementation program called the Readmissions Process Discovery Tool, which can provide your organization with a retrospective assessment of cases to identify opportunities for improvement. On the screen here, you'll see an example of a process discovery tool for readmissions in the acute care setting. In this document, five to 10 charts are reviewed to look for trends or gaps in current systems of care. This tool is truly meant to be a quick review of real data. So it is recommended that you not spend more than 20 to 30 minutes per chart. During the chart review, areas of fallout have been highlighted in yellow. As you can see, 10 readmission charts were reviewed and our attention is turned to the areas with the most yellow. And in this case, it's the post-discharge appointments process. This tool combined with the general readmission gap assessment tool that was highlighted by my colleagues in Illinois can help your organization identify the practices that often you think are in place, but may not be followed or implemented consistently with every patient every time. What we have found in reviewing results of the general readmission gap assessment is that most organizations identify that all of key best practices are in place related to readmissions, yet readmissions continue to rise. Organizations found that when completing the process discovery tool, again highlighted on the screen, it gives you a great example of identifying the fallouts and providing you with an opportunity to ensure that these practices are hardwired and improved on. I think one of the key strategies for improvement is not always thinking that you have to do something new, but assessing what you're doing already or not doing and identifying how you can do it better. Which brings me to the second tool used as part of this effort, the, des the Desired Performance Statement Behavioral Terms Worksheet. An example shown here, this tool allows you to assess your current state, your desired state, as well as identify gaps that exist and the behavior changes that need to reach your desired goal. To achieve your desired performance state, the worksheet asks you to describe target behavior according to who needs to do what, when, where, and how often, and with whom. By detailing behavior specifications, you can begin identifying evidence practice gaps clarifying who needs to do what differently, identifying barriers and enablers, designing interventions, and providing indicators of what to measure to evaluate the interventions effect on behavior change. Because often behavior change is what leads to final improvement. The two tools used during this activity are part of an innovative certificate program on implementation science which guides trainees on a framework and tools that facilitate a systematic approach to implementation process. I believe the improvement sprints are great improvement strategy that you can easily replicate at your facility or hospital wide, hospital system wide, for a rapid pace improvement effort that can help you identify specific areas of opportunities. So coaching recordings and um, the Coaching call recordings as well as the handouts and additional resources, again, are found on the MHA community website. The Fundamentals to Read Mission Resource Guide is another great tool we encourage you to review and help advance the work done in read missions and care transitions. The comprehensive guide uh, uses evidence-based research to provide vital and fundamental strategies for reducing read missions and improving transitions of care. The tool begins by discussing the importance of proper care transitions and then highlights best practices through gold standard initiatives such as the interventions to reduce acute care transfers and state action on avoidable readmissions. 
The visual layout provides readers with a concise and actionable format to guide you with your program development and sustainment. You can find the guide on the link provided on the slide. I want to close by bringing a few resources to your attention that aren't readmission specific. The MHA Keystone Center deployed a series of learning activities and recently released a guide that focused on key strategies and resources to develop a comprehensive and coordinated strategy to reduce health disparities within healthcare organizations. One of the most important findings during the course of the HIN as it relates to successful interventions in reducing readmissions is the importance of addressing issues specific to your patient population and your community. Reaching outside of the walls of your hospital to implement programs that improve outpatient access and management. So rather than one size fits all approach, programs should be developed that address the specific needs of the vulnerable patients served by your organization. A hospital in one area of the state may have different needs than a hospital in another area. Building a strong infrastructure that prioritizing identification of addressing disparities in care as well as access to social determinants of health, strengthening your cultural competency, inclusion, and diversity within your organizations are all critical components of successful quality and safety improvement efforts. We hope that you will find some of these resources identified on this slide helpful in your journey towards achieving equity in care, as well as readmissions. That concludes, uh, so this concludes my portion of the presentation. Again, we hope you will find these resources and tools helpful on your readmission improvement journey. I wanna thank you for your time. And now we'll now hand it over to my colleague, Tracy from the Minnesota Hospital Association. Hi, well, thank you, Eva, for that wonderful presentation. Um, I am going to go through um, and be reviewing a few of the approaches that MHA has taken to impact readmissions. Through the coordination of care and transition of care roadmaps, PFE and community collaboration, MHA has identified, and I apologize that they're jumping a little bit here, um, has identified best practice standards, including tools and resources that can be utilized to improve hospital readmission rates. Minnesota's QIN, Stratus Health, participated in a grant with CMS to reduce readmissions for Medicare FF fee-for-service members. Nine coordination of care communities were created that included healthcare organizations across Minnesota Eastern North Dakota and Western Wisconsin. Stratus Health partnered with MHA to manage two of these regions. Participants in the coordination of care communities included multiple organizations such as outpatient clinics, rehab centers, pharmacies, nursing homes, home health, mental health providers, hospitals, and other community stakeholders across the continuum of care. Goals established for each community was to improve quality of care for Medicare beneficiaries who are transitioning between settings, reduce 30-day hospital readmission rates by 20%, increase the number of days spent at home, and establish sustainable transferable transition practices across the spectrum. Quarterly meetings were held over a two-year period uh, to discuss the challenges and barriers leading to preventable readmissions. Members discussed ways to improve the coordination and transition of care for patients to improve handoffs, communication, identify community resources, to address patient disparities and social determinants of health and include topic matter experts who provided presentations on topics that affected patient recidivism. This slide shows several webinars that were provided through Lake Superior QIN. Um, if you are interested, and listening to any of these recordings, there is a link on this screen that will take you to the website. 
where you can um, learn more about some successful stories. The Transitions of Care Roadmap was developed by a subgroup of MHA's Quality and Patient Safety Committee. The roadmap provides hospitals and health systems with evidence-based best practice recommendations and standards that are intended to align process improvement with measurable outcome data. The roadmap reflects published literature and guidance from relevant professional organizations and regulatory agencies, as well as identified proven practices. The MHA data portal is used and it is an interactive module with two tracks um, that, it, that match the roadmap, uh, both fundamental or advanced. There are operational definitions that give users additional information and determining whether or not they meet the intent of each of those recommendations. And then staff can attest whether they have met the requirement of that element by checking um, a box. And if you see at the bottom screen under this fundamental, um, you can see check boxes. And that's exactly what they do when they are in the portal in order to um, identify which ones that they have accomplished. So this shows you um, a little bit better of the breakout of how these roadmaps are structured. So they include several different, the design includes several elements. So one of them is the fundamental and advanced that we spoke of. And the goal is for organizations to first meet the um, recommendation for all the fundamental elements. And then if they feel that they still need to make progress or they haven't seen improvement that they were expecting, uh, then would be to go next to the advanced recommendations. There are also sections which are color coded here. They're organized this way and they are based on specific pillars of, of um, topics of care that improve the measure or improve what you're trying to do. The audit style, as I mentioned uh, with these check boxes, allows you to, eat, you can print this out, uh, you can use it to take notes, you know, check boxes or, you know, put question marks down if you're not sure whether, whether you've reached that or not. There are also, again, I mentioned the operational definitions and that helps just bring clarity to some of these recommendations and um, address any misinterpretation that can be taken. Um, also, uh, I forgot to mention that on the right column, there are links to multiple different resources that include journal articles, expert recommendation, um, order sets, and other pertinent tools that the organization could use to um, implement best practices or support change in implementing best practices. In late 2019, um, the readmission and PFE, Patient Family Engagement Specialists, uh, got together and developed and offered regional meetings to provide hospital discharge coordinators and members of the PFAC, which is Patient Family, um, and I'm sorry, I'm driving a complete blank, um, Patient Family um, Council for the purpose of impacting the rate of readmissions through collaboration with hospital staff and patients. The voice of patients and their caregivers are important in us understanding, understanding the full scope of the problem and understanding the challenges that patients face once leaving the hospital. This allowed shared learnings and partnering to develop solutions. Also, these were uh, a list of the objectives that we wanted to accomplish at each regional meeting. Uh, we, we went through data uh, as 
all of the um, previous presenters had mentioned the importance of data to help guide you and understand your community. Strategies to reduce readmissions. We had a subject matter expert that uh, presented strategies, uh, which was um, extremely helpful to get a outsider's thoughts and, and knowledge on the topic. We wanted to engage the community, um, address any barriers and identify any resources that are, that are within that community. Stakeholder engagement and collaboration, identifying responding to local readmission risks, review that transitions of care roadmap and develop an action plan. So in order to address readmissions, you have to know your community, understanding the demographics, the health markers, the social determinants of health, looking at and analyzing regional data, state data, and national data to understand strengths and opportunities, where to focus your attention, attention and looking for vulnerabilities. So this gives an example showing the percent of people in poverty by region. And that can assist you in, in again, understanding the population you serve. And this can have an impact if, um, if patients don't have a place to go, if they don't have a home, or if there is um, problems in the home, this can impact their health and their recovery. Um, I don't, oh, here it's coming, sorry, it's a little slow. Uh, diabetes mortality trend. This is another example of regional data that you can look at to understand what is, what is the vulnerability health vulnerability in our region that is, in, that is most impacting our admissions and readmissions. So prior to these meetings um, between the discharge staff of hospitals and patients, we sent out a survey. Uh, we wanted to know from hospitals what they considered to be the biggest challenges in reducing readmissions, as well as successes they've had in reducing readmissions. And then we wanted to know from our patients, the, you know, what are the difficulties that you face once you've been discharged from the hospital? So in this list, uh, this is a rating based on what was the most impactful to the least impactful. And a very common theme that was brought up was the patient factor. And one of the terms that we heard a lot was non-compliant patient. And we had a really great discussion about what does that mean? Because to a patient that seems like, you know, they're unwilling to participate in their care or um, it's their fault that they're not getting better and, re and ending up returning to the hospital. So, we dived into this a bit and had some really good dialogue about the patient factors. And I wanna challenge everyone to look at this non-compliance um, or those patient factors and do a root cause analysis. What, what are the drivers? The readmission is the symptom. So we need to get to the root cause of the problem. You know, ask the five whys to better understand what is happening? Is it education? Is it a lack of resources? Is it the follow-up appointment? You know, what, what is it that is the biggest driver behind these um, patient factors? The second one was, what were your successes? And you'll notice the top success was the discharge planning and the patient education. And that really makes sense because that's where the hospital can have the biggest impact that in the follow-up calls and appointments. So um, not all hospitals have the resources to do the, the follow-up calls and appointments, but they um, have been extremely helpful in getting patients to where they need to be in their next stage of healing. 
So this shows the answers to um, the patient survey in regards to difficulty of tasks. And I thought this was eye-opening because we don't always think of the personal side. Um, we're, we sometimes tend to get blinders and just look at that medical side and how can we get them better. Uh, but these are the things that they deal with when they get home. Who's gonna do my shopping? Who's gonna do the cooking? Who's gonna clean my house or do my laundry? Um, Am I going to remember to take my medications? Do I have um, the resources to manage my own medications? So this was very helpful, I think, for the hospital staff to see and to have dialogue about. So then once the, this, um, these meetings, once we got through reviewing the transition of care roadmap, looking at data, um, looking at regional health information. The next step was we need to create an action plan. Um, kind of going back to our root cause analysis or five whys, the next step is, well, what do we do? So we provided them with worksheets. Um, one of them was to identify their potential partners. The other one was to um, identify key stakeholders and do an analysis of which of those stakeholders can we get the most leverage from, kind of picking the low hanging fruit, if you will. And then also to identifying resources, either within the organization or within the community um, that can help in the um, transitions of care that these patients are going through. And then finally, collaborating with the community. Um, and I, I've seen some really great work done in regards to um, opioid overdose deaths and, and substance use. And I think readmissions um, could use that framework, I think, to make to learn how we can bring that community together to solve other problems. And then we talked about doing small tests of chains, change. We don't want to solve all the world's problems in one sitting, it's not possible. So what do we start with? Because I think when you're looking at this mountain, you're thinking, oh my gosh, it, it's, it's just so much work. It's gonna take so much time. I don't see how I'm going to be able to accomplish it. But if you just take one thing, and maybe it could be a disparity. Maybe um, there's uh, problems in um, food. There's not enough food for certain patients, well, how do we connect them with the right resources so that they, they can get that as, as one test of change to see if that helps. So um, in conclusion, I would like to share some resources with you. One of them is, of course, the Transitions of Care Roadmap. And then both Broad Street and Community Call Commons are two websites that provide data. Of course, the CDC, you can always find data there and your state dashboards could also provide some useful information. So with that, I will turn it over to Nadine. Thank you, Tracy. And I just wanna say a really huge shout out and thank you to all of our presenters today, to Jenny and Adam, Eva and Tracy. Just thank you so much for all the continued collaboration, sharing the resources on the playbook, the improvement sprint, roadmap, success stories, the list goes on and on. So I'm just encouraging and reminding people to go to the links that were included in both the chat box as well as following the links when you have the opportunity, opportunity to get the slides. Um, so just make sure you go ahead and do that. And um, you'll see that everyone that presented today, their contact information is here on the slide showing, or if you uh, don't have a chance to write it down quick enough or access it on the slide deck, just feel free to reach back out through the invite. And I'm just going to hand it over here quickly to Naomi in case we have uh, any questions. Our only question in the chat box right now is for Eva regarding the playbooks and People are asking where, like the location of the playbooks as well as just if they need login access. OK, 
Hey, so it's Jenny in, in Illinois. Um, I can go ahead and answer that question. Um, so the so I think the link might have been shared a couple times. It's also in the slides, um, and it'll take you to a website um, that has all of the playbooks in one spot. So if you click on the playbook that you're interested in downloading, it'll take you to another page that has some additional information um, about that specific playbook. And in the lower right-hand corner of the screen, uh, you'll be able to, to click on a prompt that says download the playbook. Um, and so if anyone has any questions or any issues, if they're trying to, to get access to those playbooks, please let us know um, and we'll, we'll help you work through those. Thank you, Jenny. And Nadine, that was it for the questions box. Okay, perfect. Thanks for telling me. All right, well, with that, thank you to all the participants for your time today. It's great to see month after month all of the participation and people that have been able to make the time to join us. The recording and the slides will be posted shortly. And then on this slide, you'll just see that our last of the webinar series on September 7th will be on pressure ulcer. And then we also have an offering, um, it's open to anyone, on, um, put on by MHA, um, it's a Central Symposium on October 1st. Um, and again, there's a link to the YouTube page on there for the previously recorded webinars if you missed something within our series. So thanks again. I hope everyone is staying safe. Uh, enjoy the rest of your summer, and we'll see you all in September. Thank you. Bye-bye.